Hi, my name is Kit Davy, and today I'm going to show you how to make this sculptured house. I call it an open house, and it consists of one long piece of paper and then elements that you add either to the bottom or the sides. Here are a few examples. I've used a uh, two sheets of dictionary paper that I've glued together to make it stiffer. And same with this paper here, and this is an image from an old book. This is some wrapping paper, uh, two sheets I glued together so it'll be a nice stiff structure. And same with this. So the tools that you need to make the book are a pair of scissors, a pencil with an eraser, you'll need a ruler and some liquid glue. I like to use PVA, polyvinyl acetate, and a paintbrush, oh, like a quarter of an inch wide, and a jar for water, a rag so you can wipe your hands off, and a bone folder. And if you don't have a bone folder, you can use a dinner knife and just use the back side of the dinner knife to create the creases. And then ingredients for the, the actual uh, structure, you'll need one piece of stiff paper, like cardstock, that's double-sided. And this is some paper that I painted on one side, and it just has pale uh, blue on the other. And then some images, such as oh, something that you cut out from a book, or postage stamps, or um, things like that to add to the inside of your book. So we're going to start with our two inch by nine inch strip of paper, which is double sided because you can see both sides of the paper. Um, and it should be fairly stiff, like cardstock stiff to hold up. If you use a flimsy piece of paper, you won't get a good stiffness um, to keep the structure of the shape. So I've got my piece of paper. I need my pencil and my ruler. And what I'm going to be doing is marking off, and uh, this is going to be the inside of the book, so I'm going to mark off some measurements, and I made a little template here to show you. So, uh, and this is where I'm going to be making some creases, so I'm just going to use my ruler and make a mark at half an inch, and then I'm going to move it, and the next section is two inches long, so I put a little tick mark there. The next section after that is an inch and a quarter, so I put a little pencil mark there. And another inch and a quarter. This is going to be the roof part here. And the last two sections are uh, two inches each, okay? And once we have those marked off, we're going to get our ruler and our bone folder and make some scoring marks because we will be folding along these scores and once I have these scored I'm going to be folding this is the inside of the book and I could erase those pencil marks so you don't see them um, when the book, excuse me, when the house structure is finished. So I'm going to fold uh, and crease at each one of those score lines I made. And now you can see that this is when you put it all together is the house shape. And this little half inch flap is going to get glued to the outside of the house. But before we uh, glue the structure together, we are going to uh, add some embellishments. You know, for example, here I have an owl and here I have two butterflies. So for this book, I've chosen to install some uh, fish and we install them before we glue the structure because it's easier to get in. 
So what I do is uh, figure out the composition, and I think I want to have one fish here and another fish, which is a little bit longer, here. So I'm just going to bend these back and because I, I need to make a tab in order to glue that fish to the inside of the house. So I'm going to bend back and snip off part of this because I will be adding glue to this part right here and then installing it there. I wanted to mention another option for installing things. Let's say you have an image that where you don't want to bend any part of it back. You want to be able to see the whole thing. Well, what you can do is cut out a little L-shaped piece of paper and you can glue it to the back of that item. And then, let's say I want to install it on the floor of the house, then I would add a little glue to uh, the bottom of that tab and install it like that. And that allows me to see the whole item without having to bend any of it back. And if I wanted to install it so that it's floating from the side, I'd add a little glue here, glue it to the back of that item, and then add a little glue here and install it on the wall of, of the house. Um, so that's if you have something that you've cut out and you don't want to fold any of it back. But back to my fish, what I'm going to do is uh, use my brush and I've bent back my uh, the fish here and I'm going to install him on the side of the house. Okay. And let's say um, when I turn the, the uh, house around, I don't want to see this little bit of fishtail. I can take a piece of scrap paper, the same paper as the, the uh, inside of the house, and I could cover that up. I could glue that on there so you don't see where I bent back that little cutout. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and install my fish offline. So at the last minute, I decided to add another fish here. Um, and I really have uh, the illusion of depth because I've got one in the foreground, one in the midground, and one in the background. And I position them to help fill up the space. So now comes the final step where I'm going to put glue on this little flap, the inside of this flap and it's going to get glued to the outside bottom of the house. And voila, you have your open house paper sculpture piece. I hope you had fun making your own and I'd love to see what you created. So feel free to email me at kitdavy at aol.com with photos of your finished work. Thanks very much and have fun.